not only are we not done, again, we're evolving creatures. So if we do search for anything outside of ourselves, it really needs to come from within. So my hope again is that this, whatever, however you beat my work, whether it's in this workbook in and of itself or following the free content um, that I put out on all the social media channels, that is my goal is to relieve the shame that yeah. many of us might be yes. feeling if we're feeling stuck, if we don't know who we are, if we don't know how we want to spend our time, let alone what our purpose and passion is. And I assure you, anyone listening, we all have those deeper spaces. We all have those desires. We all have natural talents that can be blossomed into what we're doing and what our purpose is here. Mm -hmm. um, so whether or not we're stuck, again, disconnected from ourselves, or just desiring mm -hmm. some helpful self-awareness, my hope is that whoever you are, um, that this will provide you an implemental toolkit um, that you can bring with you wherever you are on your journey. Hi, hi. Hi. You probably heard me babbling on and on. So I'm sorry I didn't even see your request right away. No worries. Thank, thank you. That was so kind. I was all lit up with big smiles hearing the introduction. So thank you with my whole heart. Oh, no. Thank you so much. Uh, you just, I mean, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. We're going to stay focused. Uh, but really just, I am such a deep admirer of your work. And, and it's funny. So I have this iPhone and I have a brand new iPhone because I really need to switch it up to my iPhone, but I do screenshots a lot. I had to start going through and delete my photos because there's like, it was taking up too much memory or data. So I couldn't switch over and I'm going through and I have so many screenshots of your posts. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many screenshots. And so just on a personal level alone, you have helped millions. And you've helped me personally so much. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and your journey. Uh, it's an ever healing process. And um, I'm so excited that you're here to share space with us today. So thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for having me. Uh, Serena, I'm so glad that you are resonating so much with my work. This is why I share so much and I do the why I do what I do. So again, thank you. Thank you. Yes, and so I, I gave a little bit of an intro. It's you know it doesn't do justice at all. Um, I was wondering if you could just there there are probably some people on here that uh, are meeting you for the first time today, and I would love if you could just give them a quick summary of how you you know your journey from what you did as a clinical psychologist, um, and then why you do the work now and creating tools like this for us and. I won't, I won't go through all my bookmarks, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so my journey actually is an intersection, I think, in a lot of ways of my own personal mm -hmm. struggles and a lot of the struggles that I would see when I was working one-on-one -on -one with clients. So after, for as long as I can remember, I was marching to be the, come, the psychologist that I always wanted to be. I've been really, really fascinated with people, what makes people similar to myself, dissimilar. So very intuitively, I yeah. marched the journey of becoming that psychologist. I opened up a private practice. I was actually living in Philadelphia mm. at the time. And on the personal side of my journey, as long as I can remember, as far back as I can remember, the best way to describe myself is quite literally the little girl scared of the world. Mm. I mean, anxiety was such a foundational part of my life. Um, up until the more recent past. And I think like a lot of us, you know, I was under the assumption that it wasn't necessarily going to be a conversation for me about relieving myself of this lifelong anxiety. I really thought that my tools were going to be around managing it. And yeah. So now flash forward in time, being, you know, on the other side of the couch myself, now having a practice working with many clients. And what I came to see and, and feel was overwhelming disempowerment. Yeah. No matter how much I was seeing my clients working with many week after week, month after month. And I felt myself to be a very much action based is the way I would yeah. describe it. Therapist yeah. always talking about tools, what to say or do, or how to break the habits that was bringing most people into my treatment room. And what I was met with mm -hmm. was reports of, of no matter how much I know better, I just can't change. Mm -hmm. So for me, this idea of being stuck, yeah. was hitting me over the head. And if I was being honest, I felt very stuck in my yeah. own personal life, having checked a lot of boxes of success, yet 
I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I wasn't even feeling really connected to the life around me. So my journey began in curiosity. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really, you know, sought to understand why so many of us are so stuck. Why, you know, are so many of us suffering at yeah. an increasing rates over the decades and years and not really making progress, really simply not getting mm-hmm. better. So for me, you know, really pulling back, understanding all of the different roles. And I love your work because you talk a lot about nutrition. And mm-hmm. For me, that was a huge shift in my clinical training. Traditionally, we oh, wow. pretty much only talked about the mind um, yeah. of the person. And so shifting into working holistically mm-hmm. was really, really transformational. And of course, I wrote about a lot of that part of my journey yeah. in the first book, yeah. uh, how to do the work and, you know, gave some tools. And as I was writing that book, you know, it was coming to my awareness the reality that we all are so subjective to mm-hmm. ourselves and the habits and patterns that you'll probably, if you ever yeah. heard my work, me yes. talking about or keeping yes. us stuck. Yes. So this new workbook was really born out of the need, what I felt is to give people the places to look, how to begin to turn the spotlight mm-hmm. on themselves mm-hmm. to see exactly, because we're all stuck in different ways. There's no really universal way that we're all struggling with the same thing per se, Mm -hmm. but giving readers the tools to begin to explore their own stuckness Mm -hmm. so that they can, of course, create change. Yes, and um, and that's exactly, I mean, you guys, I know that there are people on here saying, I'm buying a book right now. I just bought the book. I mean, so here's the book. Okay, so that you and it, you can go to uh, Dr. Nicole's uh, link right here. I have a pin, and you can go to her Instagram account, give her a follow, and go to Amazon and everywhere in your local bookstores. This is how the book looks like. It's like a workbook. It's almost like she she start she created a template for your own diary and your own journal, and she gives you um, there's like milestones and and prompts and and it's almost like your journal or your diary is talking to you um, in a way. That's sort of how I looked at it because everyone knows we should write down our thoughts. You know, we should journal, we should do these things. And I, I say the same. And sometimes you are stuck. You have so much to say. You don't know exactly how to express even to yourself how you feel, why you feel that way. And this entire book has all these questions and tools to help support you. So it's almost like there's a person here um, talking to you and, and, you know, just for that reason alone, I feel like it's something we all have to have a tool because, you know, we get stuck, we get unstuck in that situation. And then we forget that the situation is what I call like an avatar, an avatar situation. And when we, we know we're unstuck when a similar situation pops up in our life and we don't get stuck again because we've somehow like resolved that. So what this is great, and you probably have to get multiple copies. I'm actually getting, you know, I already got Christmas presents, but now everyone's getting a copy of this as well, is that you can go through and when other situations come up, you go through it again. And and this this workbook helps you again. And so, and I, you know, I just received it. I've been traveling. So it was here waiting for me when I got back. Um, but I've been talking a lot. I would love if you could, you know, um, share a little bit of what I had brought up and that so that people have some, some insights to what they're getting. There's so much here. It's, it's magical. I want to actually go back, uh, Serena, to something you said, you know, in terms of like journaling and right, how much Mm -hmm. really do we know our thoughts? And as Mm -hmm. someone who never really resonated with kind of the free association or write your thoughts down journaling, um, I had a hard time really knowing myself in a lot of ways. And the reality of it was I had a really pivotal moment in my 20s where I was, you know, going on and on with a friend of, of some stress I was feeling about how I was going to spend an upcoming weekend, mm. say. And I was telling, I was going over how everyone in my life wanted me to spend that particular day, what they wanted of me. And my friend very calmly, when I was done talking about what everyone else wanted or needed from me, yeah. she very calmly looked at me and said, okay, well, Nicole, what do you, what do you mm. want? And how do you want to spend your time? Now, this is very objective, right? How do I want to spend my Saturday, right? And I was so dumbfounded Mm -hmm. that not only could I not answer like how I desired to spend that particular day in time, Mm -hmm. when I really began to dive into that self-exploration at that point in time in my my mid-20s, I came to realize how much I didn't actually know myself, let alone my wants and my desires. I was so disconnected from this idea of who I really was or as the workbook, the the self that I'm referring to even in the title of it is the authentic self. And I'm saying that to say, 
I have the idea that a lot of us carry shame that might resonate with this, yes. you know, I don't know me feeling and might be, you know, up in age. And I think a lot of us feel shameful when we truly don't have that connection to ourselves. Yeah. So for me, I, I share that aspect of my journey and also acknowledge that in very, a lot of ways, I am learning myself. And even the way you're describing this, I like to think about this workbook as a roadmap. Yeah. And one that just like you're sharing, you can revisit mm -hmm. because something else I'm settling into, the discomfort that I'm settling into is we are actually evolving, yeah. changing creatures. So even if I do come to the awareness or, you know, I'm making some headway, mm -hmm. I'm starting to understand myself by paying more attention to the thoughts in my head, the feelings, how certain experiences make me feel so that I can answer those questions. What do I want to do with my time? Yeah. Or what lights me up? However, I'm, you know, I'm the age I am now and I don't actually know what the future is going to hold just like none of us do. So when I think about the tool that I would want to offer someone, I do want it to be a tool that can grow with the person, can maybe yes. be that touch point, you know, as we age into the future decades, of that self-exploration because again I, this, again something we also love to hate is there is no done i have not oh, yeah. found <laughs> the place of i can just kick back and i'm i'm desperately searching for it don't get me wrong i, <laughs> I love this idea of being complete i love checking the final marker mm -hmm. however again i'm settling into that not only are we not done again we're evolving creatures so if we do search for anything outside of ourselves it really needs to come from within so my hope again is that this but however you meet my work, whether it's in this workbook in and of itself or following the free content um, that I put out on all the social media channels, that is my goal is to relieve the shame that yeah. many of us might be yes. feeling if we're feeling stuck, if we don't know who we are, if we don't know how we want to spend our time, let alone what our purpose and passion is. And I assure you, anyone listening, we all have those deeper spaces. We all have those desires. We all have natural talents that can be blossomed into what we're doing and what our purpose is here mm -hmm. um so whether or not that we're stuck again disconnected from ourselves or just desiring mm -hmm. some helpful self-awareness my hope is that whoever you are um, that this will provide you an implemental toolkit um that you can bring with you wherever you are on your journey well i mean i i haven't gone through the whole the whole workbook myself but i can i feel like maybe it's too soon to say but i feel like i can say this accurately um this is an incredible toolkit uh, packaged into this into this book, and I really think it's I, I it's even for I mean you've helped me so much, and that's why I'm I'm so excited just to meet you here. Um, ho hopefully we'll meet one day face to face and hug. Uh, but to meet you here because you have in so many ways you've been a teacher for me, um, and to millions. And one thing that one of my mentors, my friend, um, and and teacher said was that you know, this is earth school and, and you don't ever really graduate. You just, you just keep going and you just keep learning and don't expect a graduation date because you just, you just, it, you just keep learning. It's, it's, it's earth school and we evolve, um, like you said, as we age. And so our, our perspectives change and what we came, what we thought, or maybe we did come into awareness to at one point, that awareness shifts because that perspective shifts and our value system shifts. And so, so this is sort of like this, this ageless tool that we can keep going back to because, um, you know, just, just being, and I love the science, by the way, that you have in here, of course, it's always so helpful and a big part of my practice as well. And just remembering like what those signs are, just reminding people, oh, that's just your brain. That's just your body responding to your brain mm -hmm. and not having any shame about that response. You know, it's something that like you with my practice, if uh, a, a client makes certain food choices, you know, and to not have, not to be burdened and weighed down by the shame, but to understand from science and from the soul, you know, why you're making that choice. And then it becomes something that uh, is healable, right? When you kind of break it down. And that's what you, that's your, that's your work. Um, and it's so incredible and inspiring. Um, I, I wanted to ask you is, why do you think we become so disconnected? You know, do we, you know, we don't come into life disconnected, right? And so, and, and why, as it seems like as sometimes we get older, we know less who we are and what we want. We seem to know more when we're younger. And why is that? 
Yeah. So I think, you know, for, for most of us in the speech, your point, we don't, we don't come into the life disconnected, mm-hmm. yet we are so impacted by those early, earliest experiences mm-hmm. because we are so open, so receptive as children and also so developmentally dependent mm-hmm. on the world around us. Quite literally, we can't keep ourselves alive as a human infant. We need to be a part of a relationship. Mm-hmm. And in addition to that, and the reason why I'm often sharing the science that speaks your very beautifully made point is for a lot of us, it can relieve us mm. of the, the shame. When we talk about the physiology, yeah. when we talk about the neurobiology, when we talk about the reality that when we're in that developmental stage of, of dependency in childhood, mm-hmm. our nervous system is actually still being developed. Mm. Um, actually, up until our mid to late 20s, our nervous system is still forming, which to me, you know, really illustrates the impact. Yeah of these early, early environments, particularly around our ability to deal with our stress yeah. or our mm-hmm. emotions. Mm-hmm. And the reality for the large majority of us, even those that had physically present, very well-intentioned caregivers, mm-hmm. we are all raised by humans that were impacted by the humans mm-hmm. that raised yeah. them. Um, and when we think about, you know, when we think through the generations of different stresses that happen to get to your question now of why are we so disconnected? Mm-hmm. When we think about external stress, even just humans and our, as our species evolve, yeah. life now, I mean, I've lived my whole life except for now where I'm living in a city, like concrete, uh. loud noises, you know, so far from the plains, the hunching and gathering, mm-hmm. you know, the very calmer type existence while we had different things to fear, mm-hmm. there wasn't stress out, outside of our windows. Wow. And then when we think about all of the different degrees of influence with things that have happened, mm-hmm. you know, to different cultures, to different, you know, races out throughout the, the eons, really, we're talking again about a very real impact that can be passed through generations that can yeah. live literally in our biology. Yes. So we, in terms, again, of not only how are we dealing with stress, how are we relating to mm-hmm. other people? So now we go back as a child in a state of dependency in an environment that we can't change, right? In an environment that's going to really determine how I can regulate my emotions. What is the relationship I will have with my emotions, with myself, mm-hmm. and ultimately with expressing that emotional self to other people. Mm-hmm. And again, a lot of us for, for different reasons, depending on who our caregivers were, where we grew up, what circumstances were happening around mm-hmm. us, our stresses are extremely high. Yeah. And very few of us have had that attuned caregiver that can model emotional resilience, which right. is simply dealing with stressful emotions, stressful happenings, and keeping ourselves safe, keeping ourselves balanced in our responses. Yeah. And when we don't have that, right, we can carry the impact of what that is, is the trauma in our mind and in our bodies. And until we become conscious of mm-hmm. that, this is one of the main causes of our stuckness, mm-hmm. all of this dysregulation, all of this overwhelming stress without enough resources to cope with it, uh, the stress itself lives in our mind and our body and yeah. continues to impact in our habitual ways of being. So much so that like a blinded horse, we don't even realize that how we're reacting, how we're being in the world, maybe how we're relating to others isn't actually who we really yeah. are. Yeah. It's an adaptation, Absolutely. right, that came from our environment but it doesn't really match right. what is beneath all of that. So my goal again is, and the reason why I, I love that you like the science as well, is to give people the understanding, the underlying reason, mm-hmm. because typically there is a reason. However it is, wherever it is that you're feeling stuck, even if it isn't, for me, anxiety. Right? Sure. Anxiety began, became my stuck point for a very long time. Yeah. There usually is an underlying cause and a, and a cause that might allow you to create change, meaning it might be something in your environment. Yeah. There might be a tool that you can use for your body in the whole first part of the workbook. Yeah. gives a lot of grounding tools, yeah. breath work tools, ways to attune to mm-hmm. what's happening here now and create safety in what's happening here now. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of us, again, are carrying the lack of safety from our past environments and we're recreating it in our current. Yes, and 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 thank you so much for all of that. That was so helpful. I I just want to address the audience really quick. Yes, we're absolutely saving this live as we always do. We clean it up, we get it edited so it's easy for you. We we have, you know, we take notes and the team puts it together so the content is available for you guys. Sometimes it takes us a couple extra days. Um but it will be there. And of course, all of this content is in the book 
And it's also in Dr. Nicole's first book, How to Do the Work, and also on all of her social platforms. Um, it's so generous what you've done and that you continue to do. And so for those of you that are having uh, struggling, uh, there are free resources, and then there's also resources in this amazing book that everyone needs. Um, so just wanted to say thank you to everyone. People have been really supportive um, in the comments. Uh, so thank you for those supportive comments uh, for, for both of us. There are tons of questions I think people would love to ask. Um, and one of them that has come through, the, I sometimes have questions come through before live. And it's just, you know, and, and also just to address what you're saying about how, how sometimes we're not even aware of where we pull our stress from, just that I, we sort of see our model of the world is influenced by how we're raised in our environment, right? So we often adopt the model of the world through the lens of um, how our parents see the model of the world, which is also um, somewhat adapted from their parents' experience too. So there's almost this lineage sometimes. Uh, so when you when someone has that awareness, right? When they come in, when they when they come across your account, when they work with other practitioners, and there's an awareness that. Sometimes you have to backtrack a little bit, identify where that trauma came from, start that healing process. What are, do you have, um, that's all in here, you guys, with breath work and different things. Um, what are some of your habits? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to use the word self-care because it's overused, but at the same time, it's so appropriate to help us reconnect, you know, um, and obviously this is a massive tool along with you know, some of the things you listed, what are some things people can do right now? Because people are really feeling the stress right now. Um, this has been the, the there. Number. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll always hear me talking about any, any process, anytime we want to create change, mm -hmm. we'll always begin in, in a foundational habit of learning how to be conscious, mm -hmm. how to see those habits that we're talking about, whether or not it's the behavioral habits that carry me through my day, mm -hmm. whether or not it's the thinking mm -hmm. habits, Mm -hmm. All of our human brain will not, we have a natural desire urge to make sense of life around us. Mm -hmm. So we're always internally narrating it with our thoughts. We're telling ourselves stories. We're making meaning out of the events happening around us. All of that mm -hmm. is aimed mm -hmm. to give us a sense of control, a sense of understanding mm -hmm. about what is happening. Mm -hmm. When we learn how to be, become conscious again, not only of what we're doing, but what are those thoughts? What is the meaning that our mind is creating out of the events? What is the feelings that I'm feeling in my body? We can become conscious of the sensations, the emotions that are living in my body. Mm -hmm. And until I become conscious, like that blinder course I described earlier, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to make the new choices that I need to create change. Because I like to simplify the process of change into two steps that we can repeat over time. Mm -hmm. The first one is become conscious of what's happening. Mm -hmm. What's creating the habit that you want to change in the first place, mm -hmm. right? Is it behaviors that I'm doing? Is it thoughts in my mind? Is it overwhelming emotions in my body that I don't feel like I can be responsive mm -hmm. to? Mm -hmm. Once I become conscious, I see how I'm stuck. Really simplifying step yeah. one. I want to see how I'm stuck, what's creating my stuck points. Me with the belief, of course, that a lot of that is what I've carried with me from yeah. childhood. Yeah. Then I can take the next step, which is making those new choices. Mm -hmm. Because to change, we have to snap out of that autopilot right. that's making the habitual choices for us that will run the show. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay attention to your life, you'll just go about it the same way probably that we did yesterday and the mm -hmm. day before. Mm -hmm. So to create change, we want to be a conscious participant. We want to tune in. What are those habits that aren't serving me? What are the thoughts that aren't serving me? What are the feelings so I can then make new choices? Yes. No, that's so beautiful. And I, and I just want to repeat something that you said, um, which is what I bring up often as a practitioner, just you have to be a conscious participant. It, you can't just be executing what someone tells you to do, right? And and um, and could you actually uh, take a moment to explain to us why that doesn't work? Why just simply executing what someone says to do? You know, because even though that can serve as a guide, if someone doesn't know this is a guide. Um, they're executing what you're telling them to do as a guide. Then there's that next step, right, of just being a conscious participant. What makes a conscious participant? Is it um, being committed? Uh, is it the questions that we ask? Um, what kind of discerns us from that? So we will, I mean, I'm, let me kind of peel it back to say, 
we're all reactive in some ways. We all have an autopilot. We're all, none of us are conscious mm -hmm. 100% of the time. So whether it's your habit to outsource or to ask others, right, to follow the instructions of someone else, what you should do. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to make that point that we are all, all technically yeah. doing what someone says we should mm -hmm. do. Someone though, is just mm -hmm. our autopilot yeah. that lives in our head. Though to speak to the point of being someone who saw one of my habits was to do just that, to outsource. Just like I did with my friend that day, I'm actually happy I told that story mm -hmm. because just like I did with my friend that day, asking what everyone else thinks I should do, that was a habitual pattern. In yeah. I never mm -hmm. stopped to ask myself about really much of anything mm -hmm. before I looked to mm -hmm. others. And, mm -hmm. you know, in my opinion, that could create, even though if we have well-meaning, well-supportive, even well-knowledgeable other people, mm -hmm. what we're sending to our subconscious, our self, is that we can't be trusted, that we do need someone else's guidance. And this is separate. Guidance is separate from support. Right. A supportive guide walks next to us on our journey. And mm. that can both be possible. But when I'm saying, oh, I don't matter, Nicole, yeah. all that matters is what whoever it is, even if it's an esteemed person, like I was saying, mm -hmm. what I'm sending to the being inside of me, a message is that I'm actually not to be trusted. Mm. I, you do need to rely on someone else. And I saw this even as being a professional, a psychologist in the yeah. room, right? I've seen a lot of people and my hesitancy would be to suggest anyone that has ever worked with me in any context to just defer to me. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of that, um, you know, again, for many different reasons with this idea that we need to just outsource or to believe what mm -hmm. someone else says because of the credentials after them, you know, whatever it might be. Right. And I really, my hope is that whatever supportive professional, wherever it is that you're doing the work, that we can evolve into that more collaborative approach. Because each of you listening, all of us have the deeper knowledge of ourselves. I mean, yeah. we're the one who spends the most time with ourselves. We're the one who's going to be responsible yes. for showing up and becoming conscious so we can change yeah. consistently. So to go back to, I think I heard you say something about being consistent, right? Mm -hmm. The consistent repetition of new choices creates new habits. That's all going to mm -hmm. be on me, regardless of the support I have around me. And of course, I'm a proponent of support. Mm -hmm. um, one of the first things I did when I created the Instagram account was to start to use a hashtag so that people who were resonating, hashtag self healers, yes. can find each mm -hmm. other in community mm -hmm. because it is very clear to me how important how important safe communities are where we can begin to have language, yeah. share our ideas freely, and hear from other people who might not be living the exact same journey, mm -hmm. but again, who could be that emotional support on our journey. So again, create we create new habits mm -hmm. by becoming conscious, by consistently making new choices. Mm -hmm. And my goal is, is that what we're beginning to do in those new choices is factor ourselves in, become yep. that active participant, tune inward, ask yourself, whoever's listening, what do I want? What do I need? Especially if you're like me, always the person who's worrying yes. about what everyone else wants yes. to be <laughs> I feel like it's built in, if, particularly if you are a natural uh, caretaker or uh, that's, you know, part of your um, journey. Uh, in this life and then also if, and if you're empathic you know these are just sort of to just it's sort of a natural state of being to always be worried about someone else and um you know i thank you again so much for everything that you're saying it, it resonates and it's clear that it resonates so deeply and i love that reminder that you're telling people okay no matter who your practitioner is don't just do as they say don't just do as you say you know really take it upon yourself to make that conscious commitment and to be consistent and again i really think this is another reason why um as a practitioner and a participant um that this workbook is so incredible because even though it's a guide and you're and you're sort of guiding people what to do it you're really putting the power into into the reader you know into us to to be conscious and be committed and to be consistent and to be aware of what's happening in our bodies, in our minds, in our actions, in our thoughts, all of it. Um, and it's done so well that you almost didn't even realize that that's what's happening as you're going through this incredible book. So, um, so thank you again for this and your commitment to what you do. It's palpable. Uh, clearly there's uh, so many people just just here and, and in general that are, you've helped so much. Um, how can we help support you? 
I love that. Thank you actually for asking me that question, um, Serena. And I, I want to first, first um, reflect back the gratitude to the community, to the community that I'm seeing in the comments, to the community that's sharing, showing up and doing the work and sharing their stories day in and day out because, you know, there was a deep loneliness when I was describing, you know, I, I identified the need for a community that really was born out of me feeling not able to be authentic, not mm. really fully deeply connected yeah. to the relationships around me. So as much as a lot of you hear mostly from me, me sharing and talking all my stories, I see, I see the comments yeah. and up as current day, and I'm sure very much into my forever future, I am so relieved when I hear other people sharing their stories, seeing the similarity. I feel less alone myself. So I definitely wanted to take that opportunity to reflect mm -hmm. that gratitude back to everyone in community, um, because it's not just me. Um, we are literally all in this together, and I am healing right alongside of you, and it is incredibly healing for me mm -hmm. to be able to rebuild and develop a, a space where I can just be who I am, to be accepted, and to mm -hmm. feel safe enough to do that and again all of you in the community are an active yeah. participant in that so to answer your question what everyone can do for me is by continuing to do for them mm. by becoming the conscious creator in their own life because i you know maybe sound idealistic when i say this but i truly believe this is how we change the world we are the dominoes yes. you know and i think culturally a lot of us too we have this idea that the helpers the caretakers that we need to always be serving someone else mm. and you're quite literally all of yes. us pouring from the most empty cup, there is nothing left for us to give. And until we are whole centered, grounded mm. in ourselves, mm. we're going to just continue to overstep our limits, yeah. to show up in ways that aren't really in service to the very well-intentioned others that we want to be serving around us. Yeah. So the work, my hope always is to empower you know all of you out there listening to create the change in your own life yeah. because we are all part of as i say the global collective here we are all interconnected yes. mm -hmm. and us each doing the work to change dynamics relationships even just our way of being in whatever corner of the world you're listening from mm -hmm. like i said in my opinion is the first domino that quite literally comes together and creates world change. yeah yes oh that was so beautiful Thank you so much for that. Um, I just resonate with every single word and so clear that so many people here do as well. You know, it's so true. When you when you share your stories, you create such a safe space for others. Um, and and that's a reminder for myself as well. You know, I have a, I have a team. Yeah, I'm so supported. I have a village that helps me do things. And and I don't need that. I I need well don't don't get me wrong you guys i need you <laughs> i need you but it but what i mean by that is is just sharing just sharing my journey just sharing um just sharing the challenges just sharing that wow i'm 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 going back over something that i thought i had healed you know there's this trauma that i experienced and wow it took me a long time and and here it, it just got it, something else just triggered it, and I had no idea that this was this was still a thing. Um, and I'm actually going, you know, in that in that experience uh, right now. And one of the most important things, as you brought up in the very beginning, is just not having shame about it. Not having shame about the fact that okay, it's okay that you thought that you had healed that, or you know, there was an awareness that you had to it. You're doing the care that you need. Sometimes it's something else in a slightly different form that reminds us, okay, you just need to shine a light here. Let's just shine a light here because something here needs to be seen. Um, and no matter what, and just a reminder as I'm sharing, even though it feels vague, um, where there's darkness within you, where there's shadow, never have shame when you shine the light on it because where there's light, when you shine the light, there's light right and just to remember that so um I, your work has really truly um just been um it's been such a tool and and i know she i asked her what she needed how we could support her and she said to stay in community so yes and also get her book get her book it's the holiday season um i think everyone needs this book so other than getting one for yourself, mm -hmm. get a copy or two or three or five or 15 for the people in your community and your circles who 
you already know can benefit from this. Sometimes it's hard for people to share openly, looking at someone else's face, even if they're not, even if they're making comments here. Uh, this might be the first step to someone's healing journey um, because they're not just, they're, they're with all of us, they're with Dr. Nicole, they're with all of us uh, as they go through this beautiful journey here. So, so I think this is something that we could do for her. Just my thoughts. Um, yeah. And where can we get this? Everywhere, right? Yes, it's, it's hit the shelves pretty much anywhere major books are sold. Um, I have an Instagram account, have a different self.com and a website. Yes. Um, if you have any problem finding location, but pretty much any major retailers. And just to go back to community really quickly, um, we're actually going to, on December 9th, we're going to be starting hashtag meet yourself mornings <gasps> where every morning anyone member of the community who did choose to purchase the workbook and um, we'll be joining together doing the work each morning hashtagging it again meet yourself mornings all one word Amazing. hashtag um, and following along so i will be participating my whole team will be participating um, and again i invite everyone out there who is purchasing or did choose to purchase the workbook mm -hmm. to participate in that as well again it's a way that we can be accountable to each Amazing. other in the community you can witness other self healers around the mm -hmm. world creating change in their own life or returning i should say home to meeting yourself so again it's meet yourself morning hashtag meet oh, so hashtag meet yourself, meet yourself so is it here on instagram or yes. is it on all They're on instagram yeah. it'll be here on instagram. oh okay amazing and so that's that's what is that friday friday the ninth okay friday so the ninth give everyone a couple of days i know there's a couple of delays mm -hmm. in some shipments um but yeah so on the ninth we'll be showing up community if you get your workbook later than the ninth come join us um, we're going to be doing it at least for the month that's amazing and what time what time of the day um in the morning well because we have a global community mornings mm -hmm. turns out happens all times of the day so right. whatever it is i mean i'll be doing it in the morning and again just to clarify that mm -hmm. maybe some of you are afternoon journalers or evening journalers whenever it is in your day mm -hmm. um, we just kind of like to meet yourself mornings if i'm being honest yeah. the hashtag so whatever it is in your day you can hashtag it at any time that you do it <laughs> i love it okay so that's what we're all going to do on friday and you guys this is gizmo so Gizmo, uh, for those who have been following me for a while, he's been my co-host, and, and then we moved, so he couldn't walk around the back couch anymore, and he hasn't been feeling so well this week, so so he's here, and um, and he's here to get some love and healing from everyone here, from Dr. Nicole. And Gizmo, it's amazing. Yeah. So much love, Gizmo. You little sleepy. So, so we're all giving, we're all also sending Gizmo a little love and healing to today, right? Sleepy. Um. <laughs> Well, I'm so grateful. This has really been so magical, and I, we so, I'm so grateful for your time. We all are. Um, I would love to, I don't, you know, I don't know. We can follow or do something. Would love anything to do. Anything we can do to support you. Um, meet your mornings. Look at this. He gives up. He's like, okay. <laughs> no. Um, anything we can do to support you, we're here to do that. And thank you again for. Um, what many people are going to receive as part of their holiday gift for me this year so thank you for making that easy <laughs> i love it i love it thank you serena thank you for your support thank you community thank you thank you everyone so much love to you all thank you so much and then this will be out you guys will let you know so stay tuned in um down at the pinned comment here is a uh, is dr nicole's instagram account it is the holistic psychologist um she's magical give her a follow if you don't already and get the book and um i hope to see you so what part of the world are you in right now uh i live in scottsdale arizona oh okay i, I go there i have a lot of friends there yeah. i will have to reach next out time to you come you. through maybe we'll yes. get that hug yes okay good yay I all right thank it. you so much this thank is amazing you. thank you thank everyone, you everyone. all right thank talk you. to you guys soon bye